I'm going to assume that most of the goals of websites is to rank in Google search, bring in traffic, of course. And from Google's point of view, they want to connect the right people with the right pages. To do that, they use Googlebot, which is, well, essentially web scraping, um, to understand what the information is on the page. Now, I'm going to ask, what do you think, if you were trying to write Googlebot, what was the easiest way to collect information about a page as quickly and efficiently as possible? Would you say maybe some kind of structured data in a specific format that's very easy to read and pass and is, you know, not a lot of data? Well, yeah, you'd be right. And of course, that is JSON. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to search websites for this JSON data that is designed for Googlebot that we can actually scrape as well. Using an HTTP client that offers a solid TLS fingerprint is a great step to unlocking sites. But when it comes to scaling up, you will need to use proxies. I use ProxyScrape, who are kind enough to sponsor this video. We get access to high quality, secure, fast, and ethically sourced proxies that cover residential, data center, and mobile with rotating and sticky session options. There's 10 million plus proxies in the pool to use, all with unlimited concurrent sessions from countries all over the globe, enabling us to scrape quickly and efficiently. I use a variety of proxies depending on the situation, but I recommend you start out with residential ones. Make sure you select countries that are appropriate to the site you're trying to scrape and match your own country where possible. But to be fair, I've been having great success with the mobile proxies and that's what I'm gonna be using in this project. Either way, it's still only one line of code to add and then you can let Proxy Scrape handle the rest from there. Also, any traffic you purchase is yours to use whenever you need as it doesn't ever expire. So if this all sounds good to you, go ahead and check out Proxy Scrape at the link in the description below. Now let's get back to our project. So let's have a look um, at what it is here. So this is the Google Search Central and talks about JSON LD, which is structured data. And this information here is the JSON data that is clear on a uh, page that you won't see from the front end, but it will be in the view source. And this is what Google will scrape when they come to the page to try and figure out what they are. Uh, page is about. We can utilize this and I do it all the time to the point where I can't remember the last time I actually wrote code with CSS selectors and XPath. Is this pretty much entirely or you know I'm doing something else, a uh, different method altogether. So you can read about it here and it, it talks a bit about it and you can see here the JSON LD is the recommended option. So what actually is this? Well it's linking data uh, and it has some examples here. This is quite an interesting little bit of information if you wanted to come and look at this. But what I want to talk about is the fact that this is actually throughout the whole web. It's not just for products. Now I work in e-commerce so that's why I talk about that more often than not. But if you come to schema org you'll see there's different like used types here all the sorts of different things organization all of this sort of thing here this is available for everything and of course Google's example here was recipes so you can see how it's called linked data and it's always in the same script tag here like so now the easiest way to get this out is just to search the page for that script tag that matches that and get it. So you could use some kind of, you know, any HTML parser and then pull that information out and dump it into JSON in Python. That works, but of course there is an easier way. Uh, this little library here called Extract, which is um, by Scraping Hub, which is now Zeit. Um, this is a really easy way of doing it. It basically simplifies the whole thing for you, so you can call just one thing and get the information. It talks about lots of different schemas on here, but the one that I'm interested in is the extract, which I think is here. So we can ignore this, but all you have to do is write this little bit here, and it will give you this information back in a Python dictionary or a list of dictionaries in this case. This makes scraping data like this extremely easy. Now, obviously, the hardest part of web scraping is not passing the data, but if you can simplify this, you're going to have a much easier time. So let's look at a real world example. We're on this website, there's 778 items, um, pages, you know, I think it goes down and you can click on show more, loads more. Page number changes, fairly standard. But if we go to the view source, I'm still on page one, by the way, and search for schema, we have this here. This is the context, uh, the item list, and this has the product schema in it, list, item, etc., etc. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this out, uh, all of this, and I'll just go to uh, JSON parser, and we'll paste it in here. We'll validate it, and if I make this a bit bigger, you should be able to easily see here. 
context schema.org, which is what we were looking at here. And this is an item list version. And then we have neat load of lists. Now this is pretty cool because this has the item, the name, image, and the URL. So we can actually go straight to this URL and grab this information as well. So let's say we were gonna scrape this, let's grab this, open this page, and we'll do exactly the same thing. View page source, zoom in a little bit. I'm just gonna type schema. And here we are, here's the product schema. Now there's one thing to note about this is it's up to whoever built the website as to how much information goes in here. So you, sometimes you'll find lots of information, sometimes there will be less, but it's always a great place to start. So if I come and have a look at this one, you'll see it says it's valid JSON. Oh, I need to make this over here. And we'll find you know, product group, name, description, ratings, and then down here we should have color options, the name, SKU and the price, everything here. Of course, this is all neatly formatted and structured, so we don't need to do anything else. It's all here. You can you can just create a model. Um, I often use Pydantic to create models for these schemas and just dump it straight in and away you go. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you how we can utilize the first one from this search page here, scrape the data, and then use this schema to get the links for the individual product pages to then pull this schema out and get our data in. Now I'm gonna try and keep this as simple as possible. So I'm going to, uh, we'll come over to my project folder and we'll create a new directory and we'll just call this one uh, like this. Uh, it doesn't matter what you call it. And I'm going to go ahead and create a Python virtual environment in here. Uh, Python 3-M, VNV, VNV. We're going to need to install a couple of things to help. Obviously, we're going to need to install Extract as well. So I do ACT, that's a shortcut for me, your source bin activate. So I'm going to do pip3 and we're going to install a few things. So we do need Extract. I'm going to install TLS client and I will talk about that when we use it. Uh, and I'm going to install Rich as well. And I think that's probably all we're going to need. Now I'm going to build some code out here. I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible. I'm going to include a thing, a few things that you probably may or may not need, but they're good practice and good to understand uh, how they work. So let's create a new file. Let's call this main.py and open it up. Let's import what we need. So we're going to import in TLS client. We'll import in OS. I need that for my proxies, which I'll cover in a minute as well. And then we do from extract.jsonld. We're going to import in JSONLD extractor because that's the one we're going to be working with. So one of the optional things that I'm, I do often use, in fact, pretty much all the time, is I use rich logging. Um, I really recommend using this. It's so easy. You just have to copy this, import, uh, install rich, copy this, and stick it in, and then change the level. I'm going to change this to info. And that's it, we don't need this bit. But now our logger is, is set up and it's gonna look great. And it's just gonna make reading the output from your terminal much, much easier. And if you ever run this code on a server or anything like that, you'll have timestamps and you'll see exactly what's happening, obviously depending on where you put it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create my um, instance of the JSON LD extractor. This is what we're gonna use when we pull that data out. This will do everything for us, the parsing and then creating the dictionary for our Python uh, from the JSON. I'm going to do is we are going to use our TLS client. Now you may not need to use this in some cases, but it's definitely worthwhile. And I've done videos on TLS fingerprinting before. And I just got into the habit of always using it rather than plain requests. TLS client is just built on top of requests and it gives us a more browser like TLS fingerprint to work with. So we're going to create the session and we're going to tell it to mimic Chrome 120 as much as possible. This is like based around um, the ciphers and everything. This is really interesting. If you want to go and read into it a bit more, I definitely recommend that. Uh, I'm added the URL in here, and then I'm adding my proxies to my session. Uh, always use a session. It's just much neater, much more um, tidy, and it will actually be slightly quicker too. Um, I'm using my proxies, great proxies here, and I'm going to use the mobile proxy in this instance, the UK one. I quite like this one. It's pretty good. The next thing I've done is I've added in a load of extra headers. Again, this is specific to me and scraping this site. You'll want to figure out which headers you may or may not need to scrape the sites that you're scraping. It's just generally good practice to include as many browser-like headers as you can, but you don't need to go over the top. And in fact, if it works without it, 
all the better and that's fine. So what we're going to do now is we'll do our response is equal to our session dot get and we'll throw in the URL here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to print out the response dot status code and we're going to run this and just make sure everything is working and I've got an error. So sometimes with the um, so I've had this problem come up a few times it doesn't install typing extensions for some reason you may or may not have this if you do you have to do this cool so let's just run it now perfect so this is running away and I got 200 so now I know that that is working so there's one thing I want to show you before I carry on and that is back on the website and the fact is that when we are on this page when we start to scroll down we see we're on page four when you actually open our oh, five six okay where my mouse is auto scrolling me down let's stop at seven if I go view page source it's gonna take a little bit longer to load but if I go schema we can see that we actually have 252 items and this page, this list is much, much longer. So what it's doing is actually every time you scroll down and, and it adds a new page, it's just adding it in rather than creating a new one. So we could easily just load them all up. So I'm looking at how many items was it? 778. So let's just go uh, 778 divided by, I think it's 36 on a page, 21.6. Let's see what happens when we go to page 21. Maybe this is a bit ambitious to try and load up so many. But you could either, you know, you could go through each one or you could just do you know, one at a time. So what we'll do is, okay, we did get 21 in the end. Let's leave it at uh, one for the moment and work with that for now. So I'm going to get rid of this. I don't need that. Then I'm going to say that my data is going to be equal to the JSLRD, which is what I created, uh, dot extract. So this is going to pull this out and I just want response dot text. This one line of code here is going to do the whole thing of pulling out this code here. So now if I was to do uh, print our data in fact I'm not going to use print we're going to use our logger so we'll do um, what, did it, what is it called again log dot info and we'll make this uh, our data like so okay so let's clear our screen up and run pi main and we should hopefully get a load of information there we go cool so we can see that we got 36 items um, and this is rich logging. You can see if I scroll up here, you know, the time, the the type, and then the information I've logged out. So we want to go through each of this piece of information and we want to get the list item and we want to grab the URL. So we want to pass through that essentially. So let's come back to our code. And we don't need to log this out now. I'm going to create a blank list to store the products in. Uh, so I can store the product URLs and we'll say for item in data, let's print the item. I'm gonna use print this time just because uh, it's just it's only gonna be there for like two seconds whilst I just double check this. Yeah, so this is the first one. So we need to index the first, because this has got like the, um, the what, is, what, of it is, what it is information. We need to index the first one and then we can go into the list and find the, li the list items. Cool, so let's open our code up again. I usually use Tmax for this, but I didn't in this case. So we want to do for item in data and we want to index the first one. And then we want to ask and say, let, let's give me everything that's in the item list, element list. And now we can print our item and we'll make this uh, the, I think we could do URL here. Cool. Let's run this now. Got a list of URLs. Perfect. Let's come back to our code. And what we're going to do is we're going to add these to our products. So what I'm going to say is we'll do uh, products dot products. This is our list dot append item. So we're just looping through this, and then I'll just do log dot info um, something like item added to scrape list sweep. So now we're going to have a list of all the items that we're going to scrape. So what I'm going to do is say log dot info, and I'll say total items to scrape is going to be equal to uh, length oh, of our products. Wow, no. Let's run and check where we were at. So we should now get total items to scrape 36. Perfect. So let's go back and we'll start with our loop through the actual products list. So we can do for product in products. Uh, we'll do response is equal to we use our session dot get and we want to do the item no product we called it product here URL like so 
And then again, I'm gonna use our data as equal to the JSON LD dot extract on response dot text. Again, we're just using the extract to pull that data out for us. And then we do log dot info and we'll just do something like uh, data scraped. I make this an F string. And we'll just do data and we'll just get the name in this instance here. I think that will be fine. What have I done wrong? Did curly brackets for my log. That's not right. Cool. Then we'll do time dot sleep and we'll just put uh, I don't know, 0 0.2 seconds in for the moment, just so we can have a, have a look and see what's going on. Right, let's go ahead and run this now. And hopefully we should start to see the actual product information. So we're saying, yeah, here we go, data scraped. And this is the name. So this is basically, I'm pulling all of the JSON data from the product pages, but we're just pulling the product name and just displaying it here, um, just to keep it simple. And you can see that we are going through all of these products here. So this is interesting. We did get an error. We got a TLS client exception, and I suspect that this is probably because this product does or doesn't exist. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back to our main loop here, and I'm going to put a try in here. I'm going to try and do this, and we'll say accept. And it was a TLS client exception as E. Then we can do log dot. Uh, we'll do a warning. And we'll just say uh, failed on um, product. We'll say we'll give it the URL for oh for reason e. Cool. So that will sort that out for us next time we run. I'm going to zoom out now, and we're just going to get a quick overview. And I want to really like summarize what we're doing here. Um, we're going to use a TLS client. This is all optional. Logging is this logging is optional, but I would highly recommend you do it. Again, the TLS client and the headers and the proxies optional, but again, I'd highly recommend you do it. Once you know how to do this once, it's basically very easy. The actual code here is just this essentially, where we're pulling that JSON structured information, which Google wants all of the websites to have so it can easily index them. We're pulling that information and we're basically just, and we're gonna use that to pull the product info. So let's go ahead and just um, log out a little bit more information. So the data, the name, and we'll do data. What else can we pull? Um, let, let's go back over here and Do I have it up here? Yeah, so let's do the description like so. I'm gonna remove this for the moment. Uh, we'll save, we'll close, and we'll run it again. And we should hopefully see, you know, here's all the here's all the products that we've got. Now we're obviously only doing one page at the moment, and this is the scraping data that we're getting through. Um, I'm gonna leave it like this. I think this was a fairly good example of how to look for this data, search for schema, how you can actually use it. And I use this all the time to pull product information, but it's not just product information. As we saw from looking at the schema.orgs, there is loads of others, articles, everything you can think of pretty much has one of these. I think the product one is just probably a little bit more common. So we might expand on this a little bit later. Look, there's our warning. That's pretty handy. Uh, so I'm going to leave that there. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to see me scrape more data, but with you, with a different and maybe slightly better method, you're going to want to watch this video next.